The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Coming up on this week's show, we'll look back at Wisconsin's Big Ten opener as the Badgers travel to Lincoln, Nebraska to take on the Cornhuskers. We'll also hear from Jordan Kahoot, Badgers defensive lineman. Injuries have cut short his playing career, but he's still very much a part of the team. And we'll also chat with head coach Brett Bielema. Talk about recruiting visits and what a young man can expect during the home football weekend in Madison. All that coming up on the Badger Sports Report. On table on fourth and goal, inches away, handoff ball over the left side. He's in. Or he, I believe he's in. No signal yet. There it is, a signal, a touchdown, Wisconsin. Nebraska players jumping around like they got to stop. And then finally the signal given, touchdown, Badgers, they lead it 13 to nothing. Averderis wide to the right, Hammond to the left. Derek Watt, Monte Ball, the straight eye formation. Stavi takes, play fake, back to throw, has good protection, throws a deep right side to Abraderis, got it, touchdown Wisconsin, Stavi to Abraderis, and it's 20 to 3, the Badgers. Long count, back to throw, four-man rush, Martinez looking, backside pressure, ball's knocked loose, and Borland will pounce on it, Nebraska fumbles, Wisconsin recovers, deep in court Husker territory. First and goal from the Nebraska three-yard line, Stavi will give it to Monte Ball, straight ahead, into the end zone, touchdown Wisconsin, third of the night for Monte Ball, and it's 26-10 to Wisconsin. Ball high step to the five. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Off by Taylor. 40, 45, 50. Fires picked off. Borland quick through. 40. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown, James White. The Wisconsin Badgers are headed to Pasadena. There it is. Ron Dane. In zone. Abraderis. He has it. Touchdown, Wisconsin. And it's intercepted by Shelton Johnson. The Badger Sports Report with Brett Bielema is brought to you by your Badgerland Chevy dealers, Coca-Cola, Charter Communications, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board, Hyundai, Adidas, and UW Health a cornerstone partner of Wisconsin Athletics. Hey coach, we've heard you have a big announcement. Can you tell us what it is? It's Chevy Truck Month at your Badgerland Chevy dealer. Right now, get up to $8,000 in total value savings on a Chevy Silverado All-Star Edition. More Wisconsin buyers to Chevy over the competition. Choose from over 900 new Chevy Silverados and more arriving daily, all with huge savings during Chevy Truck Month. Hey coach, are you a Chevy fan? I'm a big Chevy fan, and when you test drive one, you'll be one too. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. What light does gets in your head. You can't avoid it. You can't escape it. Because what light does, weighs on you. Do what light does in the 7.9 ounce Audi Zero Five Star. saw limits, we found a key to feeding a hungry planet. Where others thought big, we proved the power of small. Where others saw a frozen desert, we discovered a lens into the heart of the universe. Since 1848, thinkers and achievers at Wisconsin have fearlessly sought ideas that transform the world. Keep on, Wisconsin. Keep on.
Good evening from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is Matt LePay welcoming you to Wisconsin football. The Big Ten season begins tonight for the Badgers as they take on Bo Pelini's Nebraska Cornhuskers. A play fake, looking set, throws it deep down the middle, wants Jared Abradares, and he makes the catch inside the 20, bounce to the turf near the 15-yard line in Nebraska territory. Stave up top on a deep ball right down the pipe, and the Badgers are into the red zone. First and goal, Wisconsin. Stave will give Monte Ball, working behind the left side of the line. He'll power into the end zone. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Monte Ball from three yards away and not quite four minutes in. The Badgers grab a 6-0 lead. Taylor Martinez, the quarterback from the 17-yard line on first down. Handoff Rex Burkhead running left, turns it up across the 20-yard line, fumbles the football, a pile inside the 25-yard line, and the Badgers recover. Burkhead coughs it up, and the Badgers pounce Wisconsin ball. Fourth and goal, inches away, handoff ball over the left side. He's in. He, I believe he's in. No signal yet. There it is, a signal, a touchdown, Wisconsin. Nebraska players jumping around like they got a stop, and then finally the signal given, touchdown, Badgers, they lead it 13 to nothing. Derek Watt, Monte Ball, the straight eye formation. Stavi takes, play fake, back to throw, has good protection, throws a deep right side to Abradaris, got it! Touchdown, Wisconsin! Stavi to Abradaris, and it's 20 to 3, the Badgers. Back to throw, four man rush, Martinez looking, backside pressure, ball's knocked loose, and Borland will pounce on it. Nebraska fumbles, Wisconsin recovers. Deep in court Husker territory. First and goal from the Nebraska three-yard line. Stavi will give it to Monte Ball straight ahead into the end zone. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Third of the night for Monte Ball. And it's 26 to 10, Wisconsin. Thought our guys came out, uh, embraced the challenge, uh, did a lot of really good things, came in at halftime. Uh, made some adjustments, did some some things offense, defense, and also on the special teams that uh, felt good about. And then obviously it was a tale of two halves. You could feel that momentum switch in the second half. And uh, something our guys never really were able to get back under under grasp. I thought their offense did a nice job of coming out. They, they converted a couple play action passes, but the the killer was that uh, long pass down the sidelines, and then they tacked on 15 for a, for a helmet hit uh, supposedly, and, and um, you know just weren't able to. to get ourselves in positive situations in the second half on defense. I thought our offense, you know, at times uh, in the f- second half just, just really never seemed to get in rhythm. Um, uh, you know, not one thing here, one thing there. We didn't really establish anything inside of running the football and uh, obviously didn't able, weren't able to hit some of those passing uh, opportunities. So uh, the reason we went with Danny there at the end, just two-minute situation, um, even going back, uh, you know, to fall camp, Danny's probably handled that the best uh, of any of the quarterbacks in, in that situation. Again, did it again this Wednesday. We go two minute on Wednesday, and he really did a nice job. So that's the decision that we put him in there at the end of the game. So. Stop being a little shaken up. Yeah, I think he got hit a couple times uh, here today, and. Um, this, the series that he really got whacked in, he actually composed himself, got himself uh, ready to, to go back in there, and then just the, I think the feeling on the sideline was just wasn't quite there to, to go back in there. What did you think of him in the first half? Well, he, a lot of good things. Um, you know, he's a guy that um, he'll take the plays that are there. Uh, you know, he, he's smart. He's, he's smart before the snap. He understands the concepts. Um, you know, obviously this is a very daunting task coming into here. It was, it was a great, great environment. Uh, I thought he handled it, didn't flinch at all. Um, even come back after some of those hits, he, he really felt good about where he's at. Looking for pregame plans before watching the Badgers at Camp Randall? Badgerville is back with new food choices, live music, plus all your favorites, including autographs with current UW teams, appearances by Badger legends, the UW band, and of course, Bucky. Open two and a half hours before kickoff just north of Camp Randall Stadium. It's time to head back to Badgerville.
Continuing with the Badgers Sports Report, head coach Brett Bielema joins us now as uh, the Badgers get ready for another home game coming up on Saturday against Illinois. And a home game is many things, obviously the game itself, but also uh, recruiting weekends. A lot of young men or a handful of young men, every home game come come to town. Brett, what's that weekend like for, for somebody of, of high school age coming here to see Well, it's critical for us, especially with some, some areas that we recruit maybe traditionally towards the south, uh, guys that can't drive in for normal games. We really feel because Camp Randall is such a special environment, we've had a lot of success over the last five, six years of bringing guys in on game visits. Um, a little bit of different uh, approaches. First off, if a kid has a Thursday night game or a bye week, we can get them in for Friday, get them in for a 48-hour window and try to show them as much as we can about the university, get them around as many people as we can. Uh, but if a kid has a game Friday night, we can't fly them in until Saturday morning, gets a little bit more of a condensed visit. So you get those 2.30 games, there's a little bit more time there, but you, you get a young man walking into this stadium with 80,000 people, with the improvements being done, both what a fan can see and what a fan can't see, that makes it really important for the yeah, athlete. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the names of some some guys that have visited game days. Uh, Aaron Henry, um, uh, a lot of the guys from, from the South, a lot of our Ohio guys. Um, it, it's just apparent that when kids aren't around this environment very often, it kind of blows them away. Um, I remember uh, we have a young man, Connor O'Neill, who's a backup linebacker for us, who his five game day visits were actually um, college game day at Auburn, uh, college game day at Clemson. Uh, I believe he also had one at Georgia and then came to our place and committed two weeks later just because the environment was so special and he felt so connected. With your assistants now, with, with some new ones on staff, obviously you're looking for a skill level, you're looking maybe certain positions at times. But it's more than that, as you've talked about trying to find the fit of the student athlete here at Wisconsin. We do. We put a huge emphasis on what kind of environment they're coming from. Um, obviously, you might have a kid that comes from a, a traditional two-family home, or you might have one that comes from a single parent, sometimes grandparents. I don't really care what that home makeup is, but I want it to be a home. I don't want a kid that's kind of uh, been two years of his life here, one year of his life here, one year of his life somewhere else. I want that nucleus of a home to mean something, and we ask our coaches to find that out and to make sure that that's true. And then on the flip side of it, uh, the other part that's really important is, um, you know they're always gonna respect coaches, the men in their life, but how do they respect women? How do they respect their mother? How do they expect teachers that are in their school, you know, administrators that are females? Because sometimes if they have a problem with that, you might have problems down the road. I would imagine current player feedback can be really valuable, right? It is. Uh, we actually will we'll typically call our host. Uh, when a young man comes to campus, we can take him off campus, we can go into restaurants and be in buildings that traditionally you can't on uh, on unofficial visits, but the, our players are the truest keys. Um, they, they find out what these kids are like when we're not around. And a lot of times we've uh, bought into what our kids have told us, hey, coach, stay away from him, or coach, he's, he's a guy that's just like us, let's get him. Now, by NCAA rules, there is only so much contact that you're allowed to have with, with a, a young man who may be looking at Wisconsin among other schools. Do you get do you have enough contact? Do coaches, is that something where you, would you like to have more in a perfect world? Do you feel like you get a, a decent comfort level with someone? The big key factor there, too, is, Matt, how many times you can be around him. I mean, that's why sometimes those official visits, it's the only time he's on campus. But the more you can go see him, uh, if you know someone in the system, maybe a coach, an administrator, a family member, maybe, you know, we traditionally have gotten a lot of kids that tie into a ge geographic area and then they know a kid who knows somebody on that staff or, or, or vice versa. So it's important to find somebody who, who you can be held accountable to about what kind of person they are. I would imagine with a fairly small recruiting class right now, I mean, you guys are always very diligent to begin with, but even more so perhaps you need to be with, with a class of this size. Yeah, and, uh, you know, unfortunately we've had some guys with some injuries. Uh, yeah. uh, Cody Byers, you know, because of his uh, inability to keep playing, we've got a medical that brings us another linebacker. Uh, there's some things that have happened with transfers, you know, so the number's grown a little bit, but it is. And what's amazing to me, more so than any other time in our career, we're so much ahead for class two years from now. Um, there's just this this wave of, of, of a feeling that people need to make decisions earlier. And uh, fortunately, it's been very good for us. All right, Coach will join us again in a few minutes with this week's Great Day and Great Question of the Week. More to come as the Badger Sports Report continues. Charter Business helps businesses achieve everyday victories. Want to be victorious today? Pick up the phone, switch to Charter Business, and start saving over $50 a month. You'll enjoy internet six times faster than standard DSL, plus business phone with unlimited long distance. If saving over 50 bucks a month doesn't make your decision easy, this will. Call now and get up to a $500 gift card. But hurry, because this offer won't last. 
to the victor go the spoils. Hello. May I start? Special medium water lemon three ice cube. Thank you. Less, more, no. Perfect. No, no. That guy. Hi. No, no. Hello. No. Hi. Yes. I'll take the Elantra, please. Great. Which one? An easy decision just got harder. Sorry about that. The Elantra, now also available in Coupe and GT. From Hyundai. When you buy Wisconsin dairy products, your hard-earned dollar brings you more than just the quality and great taste you know and love. It supports the dairy industry, which in turn reinvests that money back into your community, resulting in better public services, abundant recreation opportunities, and a beautiful place to call home. In all, dairy contributes $26.5 billion to Wisconsin's economy and eventually comes back to benefit you. To learn more, visit youtube.com slash Dairy Impact Wisconsin. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the crowning achievement in college athletics. Awarded annually to the nation's best overall program in each division, both women's and men's sports. Celebrating its 20th anniversary, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup proudly honors exceptional student athletes and their schools. To follow your favorite team, visit thedirectorscup.com. Look for standings regularly in USA Today or follow the Learfield Sports Directors Cup on Twitter or Facebook. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Down he goes again, just inside the 25, Jordan Cahoots involved defensively. You know, it's funny when you go to class and you have discussions and then you'll go around the class and say your name and what you do and something interesting about yourself and I'd always, I'd always say I play football. This spring though, everything changed for Jordan Cahoot. During spring ball, uh, we came, I came back from spring break, you know, and we had a first practice back. Uh, about, I want to say 45 minutes into practice, I started having like uh, migraine symptoms. You know, I told Mike Moll, the trainer, I said, uh, I started to have a migraine here. And he's like, okay, well, we'll just we'll sit you out and see how you feel in a little bit. And it just progressively got worse. So I stopped practicing for the day and, you know, came back. Next time tried practicing, uh, every, you know, another migraine would happen. And, we started thinking, well, maybe this is something else, you know, maybe it's a concussion or something. We'll just let you sit it out until you're asymptomatic. You know, once again, came back for practice. First time I had contact. Uh, migraine happens again. Dr. Wilson, the team physician, he orders an MRI. Turns out in the MRI, you can find uh, I had two small micro strokes. That's a, an alarming word to hear for a young man, and uh, that's the first reaction is alarm. A lot goes through your mind. I mean, number one is, he, you know, is he gonna be okay? Uh, what's long-term effects? Uh, you know, is he gonna play football again? I was horrified. I, I felt really bad for him, you know, obviously as, uh, as a football player, that's kind of like your worst, worst case scenario. That worst case scenario led Kahoot to wonder whether he could be a football player again. I start to kind of question, like, well, I've had two of them that we can find on the MRI. And this period of time that I've had these migraines has only been a few weeks. So I had two small strokes in the period of two weeks. How many more are gonna start to occur if I'm having you know, contact every day in practice? And then you start to kind of question if it's really in your best interest to continue to play. I mean, we gave our input. But you don't, you, he's got to make the decision whether he's going to play or not. Because you don't want to go through life saying, well, I shouldn't listen to my parents or this other person. You can't have any regrets in life. Even the athletic trainers and the, and the doctors I was seeing, you know, they, uh, they didn't automatically come out right away and say, hey, you shouldn't play anymore. They were kind of like, well, you know, it's, it's your decision to make. And they, they were there to support me through it and they kind of let me come to the right decision on my own, and my, my, and my girlfriend as well. She was you know, a great person to kind of just lend her ear to me so I could kind of talk to her about things like this and talk it through. Dr. Wilson was just incredible. I mean, he'd call us at home, let us know every step of the way. They explored every avenue of where were these migraines, where did these strokes come from, and um, you know, we've got the, we feel we have the answer resolved, and uh, we feel much better that knowing that 
there are no long-term effects for him. In fact, the, the stroke site above his occipital lobe is actually repairing itself. So that's fabulous, <laughs> fabulous right. news for us and for Jordan. His health improving, Jordan is now tackling a different role as a student assistant coach, helping the guys he was lining up with just six months ago get better every day. That's his brotherhood. That's his brothers. This is his life. And, you know, to have it cut off at the knees like that, you know, I mean, he was, he was a little wishy-washy about whether, what he wanted to do, and the coaches said, you know, Jordan, you have a lot to offer. We want you to stay. It's, I think it's helped immensely, I think, uh, just to be around the guys again and kind of, you know, laugh and joke around and do all the things that I used to do. It definitely is very, I think, therapeutic. He brings an extra set of eyes. You know, he's got a great understanding as to our philosophy, what we teach. And, uh, you know, when there's 4D linemen out there, it's hard to see every single guy's detail before you get to the film. And now guys, all four guys, are getting instantly coached, which is uh, a tremendous accelerator for uh, the technique of those younger players. You know, because when you play defensive line, you're just focusing on your job and your key and your responsibility. And then when you're up in the booth, you realize that like football is almost kind of like a chess game in some aspect. You know, I knew there was strategy, and I knew the coaches worked on it, but I just to see it actually come to fruition was definitely a big change for me. It's it's a testament to one. I think Jordan's experience within our program. Uh, I think it's been positive for him since he stepped in the door, but it's certainly a testament to his character uh, that he's willing to teach what he's learned in his time to the younger players and to his peers. No, it's great because he's been in Coach Partridge's system obviously since Coach P's been here and so he knows exactly what um, you know we're all doing and what exactly what we're trying to do and, and he's just kind of evolved with us. I think he's going to be, if he chooses to be a coach or whatever, I think he's going to be really good at it. He's got a great demeanor. He, I think he loves to teach and that's what coaching really is. I think people have a vision of uh, all coaches just being screamers and that, that's not the case at all. You know, you have to be a good teacher and, and Jordan has those qualities. For now, Coach Kahoot is trying to bring the same effort and intensity he brought to the field to his new role. But the two-time academic All-Big Ten honoree is also moving forward with the rest of his life. You know, I'd like to pursue a master's degree in uh, education policy. So if that leads to a, you know, a coaching uh, career, then that's great. If it leads to something else, then that's great too. But it's definitely on the, on the table. We've always been a close family, but when something is that close to being taken away from you or the fear of, of one of your children being damaged permanently, you know, it just really makes you think about the small things and, you know, and what's really important in life and it's family. Both for the Kahoot family and the larger Badger family as well. For the Badger Sports Report with Brett Bielema, I'm Jay Williams. These are the heavyweights, the visionaries, the A-listers. These are the people inventing the technologies and establishing the protocols for treatments that don't yet exist. This is who you turn to when no one else seems to have the answer. These are the world-class physicians, researchers, and healthcare professionals at UW Health and the University of Wisconsin. UW Health, remarkable. With over 100 HD channels, the nation's fastest internet and charter phone, the Charter Triple Play is the best of everything. Hello, Hi. may I start? Special medium water lemon three ice cubes, thank you. Less, more, no, perfect. No, no, that guy. Hi. No, no. Hello. No. Hi. Yes. I'll take the Elantra, please. Great. Which one? An easy decision just got harder. Sorry about that. The Elantra, now also available in Coupe and GT. From Hyundai. Ah, the workout is over. Time to recover, refuel, and re-energize. Recent studies suggest that one drink can help muscles recover faster than other leading sports drinks. Delicious, nutritious chocolate milk. 
with its powerful package of protein, potassium, calcium, and six other essential nutrients. Shouldn't chocolate milk be your choice? Got chocolate milk? The Badger Sports Report with Brett Bielema is brought to you by your Badgerland Chevy dealers. Coca-Cola. Charter Communications. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. Hyundai. Adidas. And UW Health, a cornerstone partner of Wisconsin Athletics. This week's Great Day and Great Question of the Week comes from Dana over in Milwaukee, keeping on the recruiting theme that we were talking about earlier in the show, uh, Dana would like to know, Coach, do you feel in every recruiting class, no matter the size, do you feel like you have to get a quarterback? Dana, that's a great question. And um, really, going in as a head coach to where we are today, I've always said we want to sign two, two key players in each class, one running back and one quarterback. Um, I just really feel it's kind of a unique uh, situation that you can only have one of those guys on the field at a time. Now, as is the case this year, when you got two really good running backs, you try to get them both out there. but. Uh, we've stayed true to that. There has been an occasion when we've taken two tailbacks, but for the most part, we've only gone with one quarterback and really don't see that changing. Um, even though it's a small class, we try to keep one quarterback in each class because of the transfers. That's been skewed a little bit, but uh, it's something we've pretty held true. All right, Dana, thanks for your question. The Great Dane has four locations in Madison on the east side, downtown, Hilldale, as well as Fitchburg. We gather on Thursdays at the Fitchburg location for the coaches radio show at 7 o'clock. And of course, there is a Great Dane up in Wausau as well. Join us next week as we recap the Badgers Big Ten home opener against the Illinois Fighting Illini. Thanks for watching. For more than 60 years, the Mendota Gridiron Club has been a loyal supporter to the Badger football program. In my 20 years in college football, I have never seen anything like the Mendota Gridiron Club. As a member, you'll get closer to the program with weekly meetings during the season, special events, golf outings, and more. In today's tough economy, we appreciate your support now more than ever. Become a part of something special. Become a Mendota Gridiron Club member today. What light does, gets in your head. You can't avoid it. You can't escape it. Because what light does, weighs on you. Do what light does in the 7.9 ounce Audi Zero Five Star. We are not magicians or superheroes. We have no special powers or magic wands. We cannot pull rabbits out of our hats or make things disappear. We are not magicians, but some days we do perform a little magic. We are the world-class physicians, researchers, and healthcare professionals at the American Family Children's Hospital at the University of Wisconsin. UW Health, remarkable.